Um, and uh, I thought that I, that would mean I would have no technical issues, but we're still in the shadow. So there we go. So what we're going to talk about today, I believe, is very, very important. We, um, I think it gets downplayed and I don't think people can maybe see it at the different levels um, that it is occurring and the damage that this pattern, the drama triangle can do is really catastrophic. Um, I don't want to get too dramatic about it, but um, I was walking around the park this morning with Bella, who you can probably hear growling in the background, um, and uh, I actually realized that I think not only did it cause or ended my cousin's marriage, uh, he committed suicide. So over that level of drama that occurred in, in their dynamic and it just it all escalated so um it kind of just hit me this morning how important this is how um this kind of stuff can um really affect lives and obviously it's devastated numerous lives um throughout our family so that realization just happened this morning I was like oh okay that that's major and I really do believe it's important I've also seen this pattern well, it has it devastated me in my business uh, I'm going to share that story today <laughs> even if I don't want to um, but I've also seen it completely stop some people's businesses I've seen it stop people scale I've seen it burn them out um, obviously I've seen it ruin friendships uh, all that kind of stuff so it is really pervasive um, and also it happens on a collective level as well so we're going to be talking about it mostly you know, in a uh, in the coaching sense, because I think it's important to understand um, how this stuff works within your business, with your clients, um, but also, you know, it's it's within the coaching industry. I think the whole industry is one giant drama triangle, right? We see the the moaning and the bitching and the complaining and all the stuff playing out on on a sort of bigger scale throughout the whole industry. So. And then if we go one step bigger than that, it's playing out on a global collective level at the moment. Um, I've certainly um, gotten caught up in some of the things that have been happening, you know, getting caught up in the drama of it all um, over the last three years and really um, stepped into my uh, my persecutor on that. So I will explain all these terms. We'll get into it. Um, I do have a workbook for you. It will be coming out with the um, replay, but also um, I'll share it on my screen. So I know I'm a really visual learner and it's nice to have it on the screen laid out. So I will share that with you in a few moments. Um, so yeah, really, really important. And, um, and the reason I'm sharing this as well, and the reason I'll jump in and share some of, um, well, my stories, my worst ever stories um, is because if we don't talk about it, it can create shame. Um, I felt huge amounts of shame. Um, and uh, I think if we don't know that it can happen to good people, uh, then it can uh, really bring us down if it does happen to us. And I think you'd also be surprised at how many people this happens to. Um, when I had my experience that I will share with you, um, I it took me months to recover um I was totally devastated heartbroken um but when I started sharing with a few friends with um a coach with a you know a healer all that kind of stuff the number of people that said oh my gosh me too and I was like wait what you, you you've had this <laughs> I thought it was just me I thought I was bad I thought it was like it was it was just a horrible experience so part of um me sharing this uh, is to have you understand um, that it might happen to you. And if it does, you're not a terrible coach or a bad person, um, that it can happen to good people um, and that it's it's really nobody's fault. OK, so we are going to get into this um, in a moment. Now, we the drama triangle has three points, which I will pull up on the screen in a moment but one of them is a bit is called the victim and I think as soon as you start getting into this kind of topic it becomes uh people start to blame victims and there's a lot of victim shaming can happen and go on um and I want to just be very clear that that's not what we're doing so 
that my story I talk about the victim and whatever but it's n none of these points on this triangle uh are good <laughs> let's just be clear about that they are all victims right because ultimately it is a horrible triangle a horrible situation and everybody is a victim in this and I'm a big proponent of again we're not making anybody bad or wrong um and it's not your fault until you realize what's going on until you see the patterns that are playing out until you um, can accept your part in it um, and then we'll talk about the healing and how to how to deal with it if it does ever happen to you because I made a few mistakes in that department um, and um, and how we can sort of move on from it and learn the lessons and um, and make sure it hopefully doesn't happen again so um, I always say that, you know it's not it was never your fault but it might be your responsibility if you see yourself in any of these patterns um then uh we definitely want to be taking responsibility for it so um you know in in, a, in our industry you know we often um we can have these sort of witch hunts as well i've seen that happen this um, workshop was partly inspired by that now I didn't go and read all the posts and get all caught caught up in it I didn't even see the the specifics of what was going on in our industry at the end of last year but I've seen it happen multiple times over the years um, where one person gets completely vilified um, and torn down as if they were the worst human on the planet and um, it's very very hard for people to come back from that now Again, this is also not making only the coach right, right? There is also some bad dodgy practices that happen in our coaching industry. Um, I've heard and seen some pretty awful things and I have had to step out of um, different coaching containers when I've witnessed certain behaviors that I didn't agree with or didn't um, uh, feel was right or okay. And so this is not saying that there aren't um, kind of dodgy things that go on as well. So we're not making only one party right, only one party wrong. We are all um, all part of this, right? We're all, we can, if you are in a drama triangle, if you've been in drama triangles, then, um, you know, we're all part of it. We're all um, needing to do a little bit of work on ourselves, right? So, so some of the ways you start to see this um, showing up is when we get caught up in the the blaming and the the complaining because often this um, it's so pervasive and it's so sneaky this triangle is that you often don't see it coming until it's too late and what we often find is that we don't realize it's happening until we're over in the persecutor troll phase <laughs> uh, which is not good so that's when the blaming and the shaming and the gossiping and the bitching is happening sometimes if I'm in if I've witnessed it or I've been part of it or I've been caught up in the whole story and I want to know everything that's happened and who's right and who's wrong and all that kind of stuff it's not until that point where I'm like ooh. What, what part have I played in this right so we've all we're all playing our part if we're caught up in these in these cycles um and before we jump into the story and the thing I also want to say that the the basis for this addiction to drama which we uh many of us have um it, it's the same as an addiction to drugs alcohol um people who are have trauma in their lives usually become addicted to some sort of chaos um, or they are trying to suppress what is going on within them um, with various substances right we all you you pick your poison right so what often happens you know, people they suppress their emotions or something that has happened to them um, and they'll go into you know these sort of negative cycles and we can see it right quite often it's very um, obvious we know something um, specific happened to them in childhood and then you can see the outcome um I know that with with friends or whoever if they've st struggled with different addictions it's kind of obvious it's not expected but it's kind of you can see why right and the and the addiction is obvious right I've um had I ironic maybe partly through my learning or being part of this I've had um quite a few friends who have um been former alcoholics and sort of been very much um 
just finding out about their stories and where it came from and what it stemmed from um, and their process and how, how they go through it and how they create also drama in their lives. But those are quite sometimes obvious things that have happened to somebody. Abuse, you know, maybe their parents divorced when they were very young or there's been something quite major has happened to them um, that has caused this downward spiral. So, but what I'm beginning to realize is that something that I'm even more interested in because I think there is a lot of help for those things that we call big T traumas, right? If somebody has... Um, we often use the example of having been to war, that a war veteran, they've done some tours in Iraq, they have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. We kind of expect them to be a little bit traumatized, right? It's it's almost like it's a valid trauma, um, and they're um and and they have a trauma response, and I don't think there's actually enough help for them, but they they might be able to get help, or it might be easier to diagnose. Um, something like that and um, and there are you know the other big ones that are obvious right um, maybe a bad accident or losing a parent or a loved one and um, losing a child there's some big meaty things that you would almost expect somebody to have um, a negative out for a, a trauma and an outcome from and while uh, no I mean they are they are the big ones right they are the ones that we are most most talked about and there might be the most support for in the form of therapists or people um, offering help and all that kind of stuff. What I'm beginning to, and I'm actually um, tell you, tell you, I'm actually writing a book about it. It came through as a very divine uh, moment um, and I was shown uh, a book name and a book and the book cover. Um, and so I'm writing a book called Little T Trauma and this is what I'm beginning to understand a lot of my work has actually been around and is something that I'm passionate about because it's more of my story um, and what I have overcome is little t trauma. So one moment. So big t trauma are the, the big things, right? The things you would expect somebody or we've maybe heard about. Little t trauma are the smaller things that you maybe have dismissed you would have never in a million years thought that they would cause an uh, an issue in your life, maybe even an ongoing problem. Maybe the other parties involved would, um, wouldn't even remember it, right? Somebody's going to remember a car accident, but maybe these things are, are just nobody else remembers apart from you. You might not even be consciously aware that it has caused an issue or a, a problem later in your life. But, um, and these small things can be, a comment from a stranger. Um, for me, I had a lot of trauma around getting the bus home from school. <laughs> it was a public bus. So we used to, I used to get it from age five. Um, I had a lot of trauma come up around that in various degrees, right? And um, I worked with a few coaches around it and, you know, I'm like crying about getting the bus home from school. And I'm like, what is, I mean, I'm judging myself for it. I'm like, how is this even a thing? I don't even think I cried on the bus home from school <laughs> you know I was you know I was um uh you know I just bossed up and did it right so um it's and I, I might talk a little bit more about that but it's I can see that these little things these little comments from from somebody uh, from another kid from somebody else and so I ended up having a lot of emotional stuff going on because and a sort of distorted sense of who I was um from lots of little, little things lots of little instances um, where whether it was a comment from somebody I had a crush on, my parents, somebody else, and these things stack up and build up and they can crush your self-esteem. So, but the thing is, we sort of, um, we sort of hold them, hold different traumas, I guess, in a, uh, a, an order of magnitude or importance, right? Like somebody who's had a car accident, theirs is more important or it's more, um, and more valid, I think that's it. So I never thought I had any right to heal anything because I was like, whatever happened to me, right? Like nothing bad happened compared to other people. Um, I've had a pretty, you know, cruisy life um, from, from the outside. But everyone's pain is their own pain, right? It, everyone's pain is valid. And whatever little Joe, um, like five-year-old me, the, the story that I um, created in my 
in myself and my little body, um, the story and the belief that I created um, has mattered to me, right? So if I had a self-worth issue, I had to, um, to work through, it came from somewhere, right? So nobody, but we just sort of, we downplay that, that, um, that stuff. And I've even had, I've gone to different healers and coaches and therapists and things like that. And I've actually had my stuff dismissed by them and I'm kind of like I know something is happening because <laughs> something in my life right now isn't working and I'm trying to get through this thing and I'm either stuck on it procrastinating something isn't working and I'm like I know there is a root causing this and I want to get to the bottom of it and I have had people um basically turn me away and one I remember I went specifically to get EMDR which is um, eye movement desensitization something or other um and it's meant to be one of the top trauma um, healing modalities. And the woman basically, after one or two sessions, she just said, try be nicer to yourself. And I was like, what? I've come here because I'm having a problem and I want to get to the bottom of it. Um, and she just sort of shooed me away. And there was somebody else I went to with a specific issue um, and she just dismissed it as well. And I was like, I don't think you understand. <laughs> so even trained professionals, these were trained trauma professionals um don't give it don't give these smaller things that can build up the uh the sort of respect or validation they need to be able to heal and so I think the whole world would be a better place if we all healed our traumas big and little right so um if you have things going on in your life if you are totally fine your life is amazing you're never in any drama you know um everything's great your relationships your health you know all these things are amazing I'm like rock on carry on right brilliant congratulations if there is something in your life that is not working whether it's your relationships your finances your business whatever it is I believe we have a responsibility to take care of that and it could be and you also have a right to take care of it right even if it's not the, one of these big t validating traumas um, and it's a smaller or smaller instances that have stacked up over time so um really I'm, I'm passionate about it because I think it's so important because I think a lot of people you know they're not playing out their their full potential that they could because they haven't dealt with these smaller things um that that obviously are having this this bigger um impact play out and just as an example recently I was talking to somebody in the park and um one of their family friends daughter has chronic anorexia she's really very 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 unwell like flirting with with death and um she was put into a facility to help her because her family just didn't know what was happening um and she was finally getting some help to get to the root cause of her problem and um they found it was somebody and not even a family member somebody had made a comment on her body like a couple of years ago and that one comment spiraled this poor teenager down into such um a terrible situation that she's you know facing death and she was actually going blind so um you know that one comment from that person that person probably doesn't even know they made the comment doesn't even probably remember having made the comment and we'd have no idea the impact that had on somebody and so we just I really feel like it's important because you know you might have even when I've been in processes and going back and going doing you know I did so much different work on myself and a little memory would come up and I'd be like no surely not that no I didn't I'd even dismiss it myself I'm like no that is not the root cause of all of my problems you know you'd want to dis dismiss it so I think it's uh really important and a lot of the time you know as, as coaches and things you know if we know somebody's had a major major trauma we'd maybe refer them to somebody you know refer them to somebody that's specialized in dealing with that thing um but I find that these smaller traumas these little t traumas often are more likely to come up in a coaching relationship with somebody um uh, when they maybe haven't seeked out other help because they didn't think they could or should or whatever so it's a long way of saying, um, you know, this this stuff we're going to be talking about the drama triangle, but it, it is rooted somewhere, um, even if we don't realise. And, you know, you, so we don't necessarily realise we have trauma, but we have drama playing out in our lives, right? So this is um, 
it's something that needs to be healed and to be to be looked at and we'll talk a bit more about the different ways we can do that um and how to handle it so um i do think it's really really important now what was one of the other things that was going on oh so we've talked about big T, little T, and I'm also going to mention secondary trauma as well, because I think it's something, again, that doesn't get a lot of um, airspace. Um, and you can get secondary trauma from watching the news, right? And especially if you've, you've been awake in this world for the last three years, you know, the the fear, the stuff that was getting thrown at people, they were traumatized, right? The people walking around the supermarket with their mask on, they're all traumatized, they're fearing for their lives because they have been getting this indoctrination right again whatever your stance on that is you you've probably been um traumatized in some way I remember being like just really having a big problem with going through police checkpoints to go 10 minutes away from my house like that was like really quite um stressful for me I don't really know why but it was really it really bothered me. Um, and there's been all sorts of different things. People have suffered, obviously, in the last year. But also, you can get secondary trauma from movies, from TV shows, right? The drama, the gossip, right? We get addicted to drama. And if we're not actively creating it in our lives, we're getting our hit somehow, right? So maybe I would say my dad is addicted to watching the Ukraine war on well, it's not much coverage now on TV. So he's he's watching YouTube videos. He's like consumed by it, obsessed with it. I'm like, I don't think you want this to end because I don't know if you know what you're going to do without it, <laughs> right? So he's getting his hit of drama from somewhere. And so even if you don't identify as a drama queen, you know, somebody, you're not somebody who starts malicious rumors or gossip, right? Me neither. I don't go out of my way to create drama I don't like it uh I don't think I like it but I have obviously been addicted to it um I'm not even somebody who enjoys confrontation I like used to shy away from it it was not something that we I had growing up so I didn't know how to have conversations or you know be in situations like that so if anything I would say I actually tried to avoid <laughs> drama and because I didn't want to have a confrontation because I didn't know how to express my emotions I didn't know how to have a conversation about things without um sort of making it this big issue and, and being really stressed about it so I would identify as somebody who is not a drama queen uh and who doesn't want to have drama right I just want to live a nice happy peaceful life but something within me right some of my little t trauma or my secondary t trauma oh something else about that the the secondary t trauma it's um you know the one of the examples is that they did i think they did study on the the boston marathon bombing and some of the people watching the tv watching that were actually more impacted um than people that were at the event because some of the people at the event they weren't um they were just in their little bubble dealing with that person there or this person here. They weren't seeing the whole thing. They weren't getting the whole big, you know, media story and all the stuff. They weren't seeing all of that. They were um, just um, having their own experience of it. So, um, you know, examples, obviously 9-11. And if you find yourself like, I remember, obviously it was such a, a big thing. We were sent home from, I mean, we were in Scotland, but we were sent home from work that day. And um, what do you do? You stick on the TV and you watch the, the you know we watched the coverage because we were like what is going on right so you can pick up secondary traumas that way um the other really subtle way of creating drama without thinking you're creating drama is by having really dramatic friends and I have definitely fallen into this trap um as somebody again who's quite go with the flow placid I seem to have had attracted these really dramatic friends over the years um and and I'll explain maybe once we get into this how those um those dynamics played out um in in terms of this triangle so hopefully um let me just see uh hopefully you can see how um how important this stuff is and um where some of it has come from um and uh the real the the real need for us to heal this. Now I put post on one of my posts because obviously I put up a thing, come to this workshop. One of my friends messaged me and was like, what if I love the drama? Right? So some people love it and they don't want to give up because they're addicted. So 
on the flip side of healing this is um, a happy, peaceful life that can be exciting and wonderful without having to be dramatic. And I think that is um, such a big fear of people. Like, it's like, but will my life be boring? I found myself, I remember I didn't, in my 20s, I was trying to get healthy. So I didn't drink for six months. And I was like, at the end of it, I was like bored of myself. <laughs> I was like, my life is so boring right now um in my 20s and I went out on my birthday and got absolutely annihilated and created woke up with some random guy and uh created a whole bunch of drama in my life from that so you know we it was like I'd had like six months I could do this nice peaceful quiet life and then you know all hell broke loose so um we have this um so we can be addicted. So that could be a problem, especially also in somebody's business. If you've got a client who, um, and we'll, we'll talk about this a bit more, if they're they're not, if the thing isn't landing and they're not getting their, like the results in their business, again, it might be their addiction to the drama of it not working that is causing it not to work. So there's, there's some major dynamics at play. Um. Okay, I'm going to show you, I'm going to just share my screen real quick. And this one, share. And I'll make it a whole screen so that you can see it. And you can see my beautiful, hopefully, um, no, I can't see anybody. So um, I've shared, uh, you can see the the triangle, like beautifully created by me, probably in Canva, right? So we'll talk a little bit about this and then I'm going to share this story. And so I want you to be able to see the different dynamics um, in the story and and you can start to see it playing out. So I put at the top here, victim. Um, obviously, I don't know if anyone should be at the top of this, of this, uh, of this triangle, but the, the victim is there. Um, we've got rescuer and we've got persecutor. Now, in the coaching industry, most of us, <laughs> probably many of us, will have gotten into the coaching industry originally because you have rescuer tendencies. Okay, just take a moment and let that let that let that sink in. So, it's it's not a nice thing to admit, but. I think underlying the rescuer tendencies is somebody that just wants to help, right? I just, you know, would say that my ethos is I just want to help people. I just want to, you know, have them have a great experience, have a nice outcome, have a live a happy, wonderful life. And, um, you know, that that's where I come from. So, um, but when that, when it is not in check or when my um, underlying unhealed trauma little t or big t comes into play um, I can um, quite quickly and especially at the beginning of your coaching and I'll explain why in a moment you can be the rescuer you can slip into that role of rescuer um, and it is uh, not ideal but here's the deal so at the beginning of being a coach um and it, this is especially for people that have got any kind of codependency um, tendencies, you are often the rescuer in this scenario. So codependency is often if you've had, um, it's a great book, Codependency No More, but it's often if you've had a parent or um, a caretaker that has had addiction issues, you become the rescuer. So if they um, as a child, it's a coping mechanism, right? So it's not bad or wrong, right? You are trying your best um, to help the situation or to not be a burden on that caretaker. Um, so you take responsibility very young. And so this, again, it's not bad. It's not wrong. It's a trauma response is to become the rescuer. And so as a child, I very quickly stepped into that. I think probably when I was about five, um, getting this bus home from school, looking out for other people, as soon as my sister was coming to school, making sure she was on the bus, right? Making sure the guy that I was supposed to be looking after me, I was looking after him. So I stepped into that role of rescuer and also very much um, just being a little empath, a little baby empath. I didn't think my parents needed any extra stress. And so I would keep my emotions and my issues and things to myself and just deal with it. I never I have a tendency of never asking for help. Um, I managed to get through my entire education 
uh, high school, uh, university, honours degree, you know, chartered accounting traineeship um, without asking a single question. <laughs> Not proud of it, but my coping mechanism it was so strong that I didn't feel like in any of my educational, uh, early educational um, uh, scenarios was it oh could I ask a question or ask for help so I figured out and there's good there's you know there's good and bad elements to this right it became fiercely independent um you know self self uh what do you call it anyway uh figuring it out for myself self motivated self starting all that kind of stuff because I had to I had to figure it out for myself so um maybe that is a situation um you've ended up in um and the rescuer can also be a way that you are validated, you feel accepted. Um, and if you, and maybe it's a, the way that you feel um, worthy. Um, and it's a, basically a way of, of getting love, right? So over the years, I felt like if I diminished my own needs, if I just helped others, if I um, rescued others, then I would be liked, I would be um, loved perhaps. Um, and that was the way I was looking for um, the validation and the self-love. Unfortunately, if you are looking for validation externally in the coaching industry, you're going to be fucked because you're going to end up in the drama triangle. And you are going to be creating all of this shit with your clients. So um, it, it, it really does spiral very, very quickly. And I'll share some real specifics about these dynamics in the coaching industry um, in a minute. So um, let's see. We've talked a little bit about taking responsibility um, when really, ultimately, it's not yours to be taking. Uh, we'll talk more about that. Um, it's actually taking power away from your victim I'll explain how that works in the coaching um, dynamics as well um, looking for validation and acceptance you're also giving everything your energy your power to the victim it's not pleasant um, and one of the, the things is about needing healthy boundaries is one of the solutions so we'll, we'll get closer into that um, but just have a moment do you do you feel the need for validation from outside of you? Now, even if you would say, no, I can self-start, self-manage within the coaching industry, when you're new, right? Even if you just started out because you wanted to help people, when you're new, you need to be validated by your clients to find out if you're any good, right? So without even trying, um, you can feel dependent on your clients to find out and their outcomes to find out if you're any good at coaching, right? Like it's uh, it's unfortunate, but it's it's actually a, na a natural dynamic. So at the beginning, I didn't know if I was any good, right? I thought it probably was. I had no idea. So I was validating my skills as a coach with the the outcomes of my clients, right? And it is it's it's a very tricky thing, right? Because obviously uh you want as a good coach you want your clients to have positive outcomes but if you take responsibility for those positive outcomes then um and you are getting validation from that and the only way you know if you're a good coach is if your clients are having this positive outcome but whatever you are measuring that by right in our coaching industry it's often money right it's like if they're making money then it's then it's good and if they're not making money then you're not good right um and so we have this this um this dynamic where um you need the feedback at the beginning especially to know if you're if it's working right so we can we can sort of seek that validation and if you, if after that initial period of being like okay this is you know what i'm doing is working and i've been through my certification and my this and my that and you've taken all the steps to become a very well trained um ethical wonderful coach um you need to start extricating your validation from um, any of your clients results because it is insidious and also if you take responsibility for their wins you're also having to take responsibility for your losses or their perceived losses and 
I know a lot of you will be in the in the coaching space, in the healing space, you'll have clients. And we know that the uh, you know, it's not a linear path to healing and success in business or in life, right? Our healing journeys are kind of like crazy. They're like a, a crazy maze, right? They don't make any sense. And they can often have giant highs and giant lows. Um, and sometimes in our evolution, you know, it's like the hero's journey, there's 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 a loss that happens there's a challenge that takes place right for us to overcome and to to work through and to heal and so that can happen during uh during a coaching cycle or if um I don't know if you've ever happened had it where everything you have or everything you thought you were disappears and falls away right friends money belongings everything right your life literally burns to the ground and so it's a very shamanic process, that process of death and rebirth, right? And so sometimes when you start the healing journey, your clients can be going through a death and rebirth. And that isn't your responsibility, right? But they might think so in that moment of them dying or losing things or feeling like, uh, you know, they don't know who they are anymore for a moment um that that you're bad and wrong or a terrible coach, right? So we we need to really be differentiating ourselves right we can still care we can still show up but we can't continue to take responsibility for our clients because people's journeys are are so crazy I remember I took on a client once just a second I never know what stories are going to pop into my head when I do this but you know we we signed up to do a year long together I think it was and um within the first two weeks she went oh by the way I've just um adopted a baby I'm like what um and I didn't actually I know she already had a couple of kids and she was going through this process and uh and this baby just showed up out of nowhere they had to just take it like a week or two into our into our coaching and I'm like oh how are her results going to be affected by she now has a brand new baby just out of nowhere poof she wasn't pregnant she just now has a you know a newborn right so um her she actually had still had amazing results and did great but it's like her path to success is maybe going to take longer right she might not have the time or the energy to devote to her business for the next six months or a year right because she's now got this this new baby so um we we just don't know somebody might um I've had clients go through divorces I've had clients lose children I've had um all, all the kind of things that you can imagine has happened to people it happens right it happens all the time and so if you you know are trying to take responsibility for somebody's results just within that six months or three months or whatever your your package is it's um it's really setting yourself up for for um for a fall and so the beautiful thing that can happen though is you know sometimes and I'm, I'm going to tell this story I will tell about the breakdown um with a client but also I've had messages from people years later saying I've just realized how profound our work together was you know I've, it's just sinking in now I've just realized you know at the moment I maybe thought you were bad or hadn't done something or you know they were still in that blame or shame cycle and it's it's now that I can see that how good it was for me right so again if I had been waiting for the validation in the moment when we went through the thing uh I wouldn't have got it I would have made myself bad and wrong but a year later they're finally like oh I can really see how that helped me <laughs> right so um and, and that's something that that develops and grows as as you go through and as you build your business and your coaching but it's it it can also it can take you out in the moment if something does happen um and it has definitely took me out um for a long time my business um so it's really really important and it can also stop you scaling and we'll talk about that in a minute um and and all sorts of other things that will hold you back from so i think that's um oh that's you know really clear that you know again it's not it's not your fault it's not the other person's fault it's just at the beginning you've got that dynamic it's very hard not to be in that dynamic because you don't have anything else to base your uh your confidence in as um as a coach or uh, whatever you are um but you've got to to break out of that cycle and realize you know um what's happening so 
Um, let me see. So on the other side of this triangle, that was a lot about the rescuer, but we'll, we'll talk more about that even. So on the flip side, we've got the victim up at the top. So what happens when somebody, whether they mean to or not, has the rescuer energy, right? And you'll also see it in marketing, right? And I have I have been as guilty of this as the next person, right? Somebody who's really good at marketing, right? And they're going to solve all your problems and you're, you know, um, you know, and they, they make big promises, right? So sometimes to sell a coaching program or a group program or whatever it is, people have to make big promises on their sales pages. Well, they don't have to, but they certainly used to, especially with our old bro marketing stuff that I just find so yucky. Um, people make big promises in their um, sales pages. You almost have to, in some ways, sell, sell the dream, sell the outcome. Um, and I think partly it can create, especially if people are um, earlier in their journey or early in their development, they truly can believe that in that three month or six month program or whatever they've just purchased or bought, all of their problems are gonna be solved. Um, within that period and Bob's your uncle, right? They maybe don't realize how much has to go into outside of it or they think just buying the program is gonna solve all their problems because the coach said they're being connected to their vibe was enough to, you know, uh, solve all your issues. Um, but it can, it can cause some real issues. Also, I mean, obviously we as coaches, healers, whatever, have to take responsibility for our side of the marketing and, and being honest and truthful and um, my marketing evolved into being like this will not solve all your problems <laughs> in the next six months but your life will never be the same again right so um, once I sort of saw that pattern happening or I, I realized I was a lot clearer with people I'd be like look this is um, you're gonna have to take some responsibility here for your life for your business for your um, for your results so I definitely got uh, a lot better and a lot clearer with people um, further down the line but it's hard to do that when you are just starting out or you know even a few years into your business so um, it is um, it's tricky and again this this the coaching I feel like the coaching industry breeds some of this stuff right um, and we have had a tendency to put certain coaches and people on a pedestal and um, we expect when we just sign up with them that poof, all of our problems are going to go away and, you know, our, our business is going to be magical. So I've even done that. I mean, this we're talking years and years ago, I signed up with somebody. I thought it was going to be the best thing ever. You know, you pay money uh, and uh, and it, all my problems didn't go away. And I was angry and I was annoyed. And like, yes, they didn't deliver on certain things, but um, I definitely had thought that they would maybe do more or fix something or fix me or whatever so I've definitely been on that side of it it's not pleasant either and you think you are right but that is where you become the persecutor we'll get to that in a moment so when you're in victim mode at the beginning as well the reason this is so sneaky is at the beginning it's a wonder oh my god it is the best thing ever right so if you're a rescuer and you are like getting validation from your clients, right? And they're a victim. Oh, it is like a match made in heaven, right? That is some marriages, some relationships. And when they are just playing out their little roles, happy, happy days, right? It is wonderful, right? Um, and these people, if you are a, re a coach who feels a bit like a rescuer, these people will show up and they will be your biggest fans. They will be your best clients. They will make you feel phenomenal, right? They will validate you. You will soak it up. You will love it, right? They will tell you how awesome you are, how brilliant you are. They will be all over all of your content, liking, sharing, all the things. Um, they will maybe even tell people about you. They'll tell people how wonderful you are. Um, <clears throat> it might be more subtle. They might not, but it, they can be these... Um, these 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 uh cheerleader type people right so now <laughs> I fear uh if somebody is like that I would think twice about taking them on um as a client um 
because they can be because they are feeling like you are rescuing them they're taking your energy um they're um and they're taking your energy but you're taking their power right so there's still an exchange it's not a pleasant one right so because you're taking the responsibility for their results and they're taking your energy right you're getting the validation they're getting rescued right it works it works so nicely it's beautiful right you're like you're like sailing along thinking everything's wonderful and then it all comes crashing down and I'll tell you about that so the other part of this is when this dynamic is going on you can go through like I did uh three or six months with somebody but their healing won't stick right stuff you work on the business plans you create all the stuff you go through um the new programs all the stuff it won't stick and it won't um and the they probably won't take action because they're not really wanting to because they're more addicted to their victimhood than they are and actually getting on with it and getting the work done right so um it can so at the beginning it can all feel quite wonderful but as soon as that dynamic starts to shift one or other party steps back or removes themselves um or tries to hand back responsibility it all blows up and we've got the third side of the triangle so the persecutor now I usually call this the troll <laughs> um and both the victim and the rescuer can become the troll can become the persecutor now this is they're bitching gossiping blaming shaming hating you blocking you telling everybody you're the worst human on the planet um it's horrible so you've gone from giving them all of everything right giving them all your energy giving them time giving them all the stuff and as soon as that stops or you pull back or you lessen it they freak out because they don't want to take responsibility and they become your worst nightmare <laughs> they become your biggest hater so it is a horrible situation to be in um and the other side of this is the rescuer can become totally resentful right i've just given you everything blah 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 you're the worst person ever yada yada it's not pretty right not pretty at all so um it is not pleasant now the other thing these roles are not totally defined right because in any scenario anyone can be all of those things any relationship right um and they can switch and change in a moment within a relationship and um and it, when that energy shifts and changes it can be um it can cause this the persecutor the blaming the the bitching gossiping to come out right so it can um it can absolutely happen so for instance, uh, you're coaching somebody, you have the client, it's all going nicely. If the coach becomes reliant on that client, <laughs> paying them or um, and, and it, for, for their survival, if, effectively, right? They need that client to pay them, to pay the bills, whatever. Um, and that client, for instance, can't make this month's payment, the roles reverse right? Or if, if the, the coach is dependent on that client for, um, you know, it's their, for their main income source or whatever, then the, it's, it's, the dynamic shifts very subtly and the coach is no longer in their power, if they were originally, if they weren't rescuing, um, and they slip into victim or being rescued by that client paying them. And so that can be as insidious because the coach then might not really push a client right they'll they'll maybe know that uh they might not say the thing they might not go there you know like because they don't want to upset them or push them away or whatever so there can be a real um it can be again it's disempowering and it's not going to um create a really healthy productive coaching experience 
um, for everybody, right? So it's it's again, it's a really kind of murky, not so nice situation. Um, and then, sorry, it's just all coming bits that are coming through. So the next part would be if something like this happened in a group coaching program, right? We've often seen, to my knowledge, it's not happened to one of mine, um, but the the dynamics of people in coaching programs, group coaching programs, if people have been victims or have felt victimy and maybe the coach pulls back, puts in a boundary, goes on holiday, whatever that is, the clients can very quickly turn and become really hating, trolly. And what will often happen is one person, if they're like having this bad experience, they will try and pull everybody else in the program into their into their gossip, into their hate, into their um, murky, victimy, shaming energy, right? Gross, not good. But um, it can totally happen. I've also seen myself wanting my experience as the victim in a situation to be validated by other people. And, um, and I've seen that happen as well. So again, it's not pretty, but it can again cause the complete demise of a group coaching program if this happens, right? Again, you are not going to want to have another group program again if this plays out in the first place in one of your programs, right? So it can really stop people progressing and continuing in this industry if they have an instance of this. Um, it can really put the brakes on. So um, it's horrible, right? And if you've had somebody or a group of people in a group program, I know one coach who, I mean, they had a whole Reddit thread about her and like all this other stuff. And there were Facebook groups about how they hated her and all this kind of stuff. Ah, like I cannot even, I don't want to be in that. I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to be connected to it. It's so gross. Um, and it can be so based on this really twisted sense of what what did and didn't happen right so it can be it can be really twisted the other thing that can happen often in um these coaching environments is that the um the client and sometimes the coach as well can project their mommy daddy issues on because often you take on these roles because um there has been an issue with your parents or caretakers um, growing up right so again nothing nobody's bad or wrong but if but because in that coaching relationship mentoring relationship it's often the the next person that you have put maybe on a pedestal or wanting validation from or whatever and uh and so if people can project the hate and the or the pain or the trauma they've experienced from a caregiver onto their coach or their clients very occasionally. But more often it, it comes back at, at the coach. Um, and uh, that's not pleasant to deal with, but you need it. And if you are, again, if you're the coach, it can totally ruin you and, and take you out if it, if it, if it's bad enough. Right. So, I think the the key is obviously doing as much inner work on yourself <laughs> and we'll get into that again um, a little bit further on but the to not create the need for the validation in the first place so you're less attract you're less likely to attract somebody who's in their victim mode who's not going to take responsibility um, and then this whole cycle is less likely to occur um, in the first place and so that's going to allow you to um, run that next group program, bring on that next client because you're not feeding, um, you know, this this horrible situation happening again. Um, the, other, the other part of it is, you know, if you've had a situation or a group program has turned sour or whatever, it takes a lot of, you know, inner work, healing strength to come back from something like that. And you might think, well, God, I was running a coaching program for 20 people. Um, how how can I then go and scale this to having 400 people in my program? If that, if the shit goes down in there, then my reputation will be completely toast, <laughs> you know? So it can be a real, it really can keep the, 
the dampener you know it can really keep you small um and not not wanting to go out and share your message with with more people and I think you know obviously again in the last few years people out sharing their message sharing their you know feelings about things um again if you agree with them or not there are people getting completely wiped off the, the face of social media right they're being you know told that they're you know whatever we'll not get into that but it's um I know people who obviously they've had their Instagram shut down, their Facebook shut down, they've had their bank account shut down. You know, it's it's um, you know, they're being totally villainized um for speaking out. And so obviously it puts people off doing it, right? Because there there can be consequences. So um we we don't want to get into that, right? Okay, I hope this is all making sense. Um and it can it can just happen and show up in in so many ways um that yeah we we want to we want to create an, a, a situation where it doesn't start um so we don't have to stop it because extricating yourself from these situations um can is is the most painful part right at the beginning it's all happy bunnies and butterflies because everyone's getting validation and they're getting rescued and everyone's everyone's fine you know like everyone's quite happy with the situation um but it, it's that it's that sticky bit that um you know it is trickier to to get away from so i will tell you this quick story um uh, about about the the worst situation ever with a client so I had a client <laughs> uh, who I will not name, but she, this was back in 2015, going into 2016, right? So a long time ago, this is what, eight, seven, eight years ago. So uh, we had, so she came to me to be a one-on-one -on -one client. Perfect. It was a three month coaching agreement. Great. Um, she was having three sessions a month. That was that was the deal. She uh, say, like signed the contract based on that. Uh, and then I threw in this is, this is you can start to see my red flags <laughs> popping up one by one, right? So I threw in a six weeks course on money blocks and I also threw in a six month group coaching program that had a three-day live event at the end of it in LA right just threw it in you know no bother join this as a wee additional thank you <laughs> for being my client I also sent her beautiful gifts I had this beautiful um uh jewelry made by a friend of mine so I was enjoying supporting her and whatever um I'd sent them all gifts I mean can you start to see the over delivering right the that need for for validation on my part right I'm like if I'm going to do something I'm going to make sure it is the most amazing thing and over deliver right um I don't tend to do the same anymore because I don't think it's healthy <laughs> right um I do occasionally still send gifts I sent a client she surpassed her million dollar mark and wasn't celebrating so I did send her a very nice bottle of champagne um so sometimes it's very warranted and very needed but um this this client I had you know just thrown these additional things extra in so she had three months of one-on-one -on -one, six months of support within this group program um and this other course as well so um during our time together she'd also come off the back now this is uh another red flag to watch out for with clients so she had come off the back of a really bad experience with another coach and um the way he tried to set up her business model she had um goals that were physically like unachievable based on her products pricing time and just the capacity of any human to do what she was doing so her goals made zero sense she'd come out come out of that situation it was very like masculine push push whatever and she was coming to me now if you were working with somebody and they come to you and they on the discovery call they're bitching and moaning about every past coach they've ever had um and nothing was ever right and everything was all wrong while there may have been some negligence or bad practice on the behalf of a coach or certain ones it's unlikely that all of them were bad wrong terrible people 
right? So I now see that as a bit of a like uh, red flag. So I'm like, oh, everybody was bad and wrong and you did nothing to, you know. So it's it's definitely a, um, a red flag that I would see and be more aware of now. Um, my rescuer, right? My rescuer wants to be like, I'm going to give them an amazing experience. I want to bring the, uh, I don't, you know, I want to show them what it can be like working with somebody and have a most amazing experience, right? That's my bullshit, right? So I want to like over deliver, over deliver. So that there's no way that they can say that about me. But I also am like, well, that wouldn't happen. I'm not that person, right? Because I show up, I do my calls, I, you know, whatever. So, um, so that was probably the first hint <laughs> that we shouldn't have maybe done that but anyway it was a couple of years into coaching I started in 2014 so I was still relatively new you know she certainly wasn't my first one-on-one quiet client by a long shot but um it was my first group coaching program and you know I was probably trying to bump the numbers up so all fine um and while we were working together we redesigned obviously her packages, her pricing, uh, her goals to make something that made sense. Um, her website, her branding, all that kind of stuff. We worked on all of that. She had her first um, live event, which I coached her through and we worked through all of that. And it went really well. Um, we had met up in person. We'd gone really well. Um, she'd had every single month we worked together. She had progressively her best month in business ever. She had her first 20k month. Uh, everything was great. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, fabulous. She would fill out her, um, I had a little form that before each of her coaching sessions, uh, she would fill out and ask things like, tell me a positive outcome from your week, what's happened. Um, and at the at bottom, it says, is there any way that your coaching uh, or experience with Joanna could be improved or something like that so there was a box that said you know can anything be improved right during this three-month coaching period so she had ample time or if she had a problem within that time to air that but every form that came in said best month again awesome week new you know everything's going amazing um, and it said you know can this be improved no everything's wonderful really enjoying my experience, having a wonderful time, right? So that's the feedback I'm getting. I'm, I'm thinking this is amazing. I would, you know, because I was trying to rescue her a little bit, I would go, um, and we sort of uncovered a few things that we didn't, wasn't really part, but, you know, they came up. So I really wanted to help her work through those things. And so I'd go longer on all of my sessions, right? So I've got like no boundaries, right? I'm over giving, we're over delivering. Um, I even sent her some clients, <laughs> Uh, I sent some of my best friends to go work with her, right? Because I thought she did great stuff and still does. Um, so I'm even sending her, sending her clients. Um, and our coaching three month agreement ended. Fine, no dramas. It just ended. We stopped working together. Um, and she was still in this group six month thing for another three months. So she still had my support for can ask questions, turn up on the calls, you know, contact my team or whatever for another three months. Um, so she had continued support. And at the end, the three day event that was included, I was in LA and she was in Australia. She didn't come to that. A lot of my clients did, uh, which was amazing. Um, and they, some of them left Australia for the first time. They'd never even left the country. They had to go and get their passports and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was brilliant. It was a huge, big three day at a beautiful hotel um, in LA with a hundred women. We had different speakers and sponsors and it was a really beautiful event. It was my first big three day uh, live speaking event. And uh, it, it, I mean, it was mad, it was magical. It couldn't have gone honestly any better in terms of even the people in the room, the breakthroughs, ah, oh, it was just wonderful. Anyway, so, on my third night, at the end of the three days, if you've ever hosted an event for one day, you'd be exhausted. For three days, it's a lot. Um, and it was a lot of pressure on me. The stress leading up to it had been quite a lot. I'd flown my team out from 
um, within the US and also Australia. It had been a huge economic outlay, but it had I had pulled it off. We'd pulled off the really the people were saying it was the best event they'd ever been to. My coach who was there was like, your day two was the best day of any event I've ever been to. Uh, and I was like, holy shit, how did we do that? But it was, it was magical. Anyway, so I was flying high, like heart just busted open. I'm like, oh my God, this is, oh, I get chills just thinking about it. I felt so good. Like everyone who'd like flown out, all these clients who'd flown over, I felt like I was like, I delivered like the, their trip has been worth it because I felt a lot of pressure if people were buying flights and accommodation and coming to see this show that we were putting on this event and I was like fucking nailed it we did it Oof, heart open like just high with energy I mean I just it's one of the best feelings I've ever felt in my whole life I've never felt more on purpose like I don't know just epic epic um but that night that night right so we're six months after you know this end of this six month period but maybe seven months because it's the end of August now anyway I see this first line of an email pop up from her and I went oh I just I was like I'm not going to open that because that looks just the first line of this was just yuck I was like not opening it because I was in such a high I thought I don't want it this to crash me and bring me down I'm just going to not open it and look at that later I'm just going to enjoy my enjoy my moment. Um, anyway, I kind of, on reflection, I can see that that there was a there was a chink in my own energy because I was like flying high. <laughs> I was like, I never felt better in my life. Like, never had a more amazing feeling. I don't think. But a couple of things happened. One, maybe I had like some sort of belief that could it last? Do I deserve to feel this good? I don't know. Maybe I had some sort of story about that going on. And also because my energy was so high, like it just off the charts, I had like elevated out of my rescuer energy. And I think that was enough for her to feel the, the sort of pull away from me being her rescuer anymore. So if you've ever looked at the um, David Hawkins scale of consciousness, like victim energy, oh, I wasn't going to talk about this. But anyway, victim energy is below 100, I think. And the rescuer, I can't remember where it is, maybe at like 200 or something on the scale. Um, And I was like off the scale. I was at like a thousand. I was at like elated, like enlightened, right? And so whatever my massive elevation and energy and vibration had caused her to feel this disconnect I think that's what happened energetically from my role um, and how she perceived me in it so I um anyway so I think that's what happened energy. anyway so a couple of weeks it took me a couple of weeks to open this because after a big event when you have this huge high you're I was inundated with discovery calls and onboarding new clients and all this kind of stuff. And I just thought, I don't want whatever that grossness, because I saw the head, the first sentence or whatever, I don't want that infecting my energy. And I need to, I've obviously spent a whole ton of money on this event. I need to like enroll some clients right now to, to get the thing. So I had filled my mastermind in that like week or so after the event. Um, phenomenal. Had my first, oh my God, mad six figure month. It was amazing. So but I knew that there was something lurking that I had to deal with. And I finally opened this email and it was like, I don't know, a list of like 20 things about why I was the worst human on the face of the planet. Um, she was accusing me of all sorts of things, things like uh, not giving her enough time on the calls. I think she was supposed to have 45 minute calls. And we'd always go like an hour 15 or an hour 20 or something. It just wasn't true like some of this stuff that she was accusing me of just wasn't true she was also she owed me money right so here's my next hand up here's what I did so she still owed me five grand and I had continued to coach her right so we completed this three months and obviously she was behind with a payment or two or whatever and I had 
finished coaching her and continued to allow her to be in our program for the next three months and hadn't chased the money enough or whatever. So that was my fault for continuing to provide the service when I hadn't been fully paid or been paid up front. So that was my error again, um, trying to be kind, trying to let her, whatever. So she owed me five grand, which was the other reason that um, I was the bad guy, right? So she has got some money stress. She owes me money. So I am bad, wrong, the bad guy, right? So it's easy to blame me because she's she's stressed about paying this bill. So instead of like taking, going and getting some clients or taking some responsibility for her or asking me for an extended payment plan or whatever she could have done to resolve it, um, she decided to just hate on me. And the other thing she said was uh, that her, um, that she wasn't doing her morning routine anymore. And that was somehow my fault, right? And like, she also had, not had such good big months in her business or whatever and I was like how is her morning routine my like her not getting out of bed and doing her morning routine I was at my fault three months after we finished working together one-on-one like it was never my responsibility to get her out of bed like that's ridiculous you know how 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 is that my fault so um and none of it is was my responsibility. And again, like we talked about earlier, I shouldn't have taken the the kudos necessarily for her results or whatever, because now that, um, or maybe she had like attached me to those results or something. Anyway, now that they weren't happening, um, it was all my fault again. And she also said that she thought within the three months or whatever, that all of her healing and trauma and any money block or whatever she had would be completely gone and she would have no problems left after that. And even though she'd never done any work on herself before and we did a ton of work and we went over on the time and all the things, she, she needed more. It wasn't enough for me. So as you can imagine, this email, it was venomous. It was hurtful. It was disgusting. It was it was just gross. Um, I was heartbroken. She had been one of my favorite clients. I know we're not supposed to have favorites, but... She had been a fabulous client. We, you know, we'd met up in person, like uh, it had been amazing, right? So I was crushed, crushed, heartbroken, devastated, embarrassed, full of shame, um, mortified, all the things, like just absolutely um, crushed. Uh, let me just change time. Okay. Uh, so... I need to maybe not tell as many stories as I was going to, but we'll, we'll get there. So um, totally crushed. And I needed to, and this was how I discovered the drama triangle was because just after that, I also started working with a new coach um, who also happened to be an Akashic Records uh, teacher and trainer. And it was also in that period that I started learning the Akashic Records. So all of this all happened at once. And um I anyway she explained to me this triangle and she was like we need to heal this and I was like I've never heard of it before um and it all suddenly became clear so um and she really this coach really really helped me heal this this massive wounding that I had because it, it really took me out of the game it totally if I hadn't if I had read the email before I had filled that mastermind and signed all those people up, there's no way I would have taken on another client. It would have been far too heartbreaking. Um, but I also knew I now had a full mastermind and a whole bunch of new clients and I needed to heal this so as it wouldn't occur in all these new clients, right? So I was just very lucky that I had decided not to read that email before I went and um, filled up my, all my coaching again. So now, next mistake I made. <laughs> uh obviously I was getting the help getting some coaching some healing whatever but I went back at her right for every point that she had I rebutted it I was like it's not true I didn't didn't do that here's what I did I over delivered blah blah, blah whatever but I did go back with love I said look and I also went back with my receipts you know that form I got her to fill in that said everything's amazing blah blah, blah. I've had all this success and all these amazing months um so I'm just seeing my chat has come up um let me see I can't read it 
uh, yes. Okay. So somebody just said, I was going to ask if we even need to respond now. Brilliant, brilliant question. So, um, that is up to each individual, right? So it was my first experience of this, obviously devastated, didn't know what to do. I had taken the things I did do that were positive was I took some time before I responded. Um, and I would highly recommend if you are going to respond to something like that, that you take the time. Obviously, if you have nothing more to say and you're like, you feel good, um, it's uh, you you probably don't even have to. Right. It's just their stuff. But I was like, OK, I've, I've done some healing. I've seen this therapist like, you know, I've, I've worked on some stuff. I'm going to try and come back to this as lovingly as possible. And I said, look, here's the deal. Um, this isn't really about me. This is about you not wanting to take responsibility for your life, your financial situation. Um, I shouldn't have done X, Y, and Z, but you know, I overdelivered, blah, blah, blah. You can take this as a lesson and use it as this moment to take full responsibility and, you know, uh, create a change. So I said, this could be like a pivotal, important moment in your life um if you choose it to be right so I was trying to sort of come from this place of like like I've obviously been triggered off the charts um but I was off dealing with it right I was getting help I was understanding the dynamics I'm you know creating whatever I need to do in my life so it doesn't happen again I was like is she going to get the same lesson she was not available for that <laughs> but I did and the, the other mistake I made which I do not recommend is I went into defense mode right I was like, here are the receipts. <laughs> here's every form you ever filled out. Here's, you know, here's the, uh, um, you know, the time where you said our coaching couldn't be any better. You know, here, when you said you had your biggest month, the 20K, all this kind of stuff, right? I was like, here's all of my receipts. <laughs> oh, and by the way, you still owe me this five grand, right? So whatever the exchange was, I can't remember. Into, but I do remember I did insert all the screenshots and like emails that she'd sent that she was happy and all of our messages back and forward and you know all this kind of stuff I, I submitted my receipts right in I think with um with my understanding now I I would not um I wouldn't necessarily go into defense mode it's not helpful People, when they are that in their victim, they they can't, it's almost like they can't hear you and they can't hear, um, they can't hear anything against their story. And I think had I said, I hear you, I understand, like it, it might have got us um, uh, further, right? Like she almost like she needed to be heard. She needed to whatever, but also she was no longer my client, right? She was, and she did it in a really gross way venomous way right so it was it was not done in a hey I'm having this thing can we talk about it can we have a call um this thing is coming up for me there was there was no no compassion no kindness no no nothing it was like it was like anything I had done or it was was completely invalid and you know I was terrible so um it just it, the whole situation was 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 really not pleasant so my so I obviously needed to, my responsibility things were healing it. Um, I also needed to put new boundaries in place, right? So part of the problem and partly how it blew up was um, I didn't have any boundaries in place, right? Or not enough boundaries, right? I was too available, too open, too helpful almost, right? Um, so and one of the ways this thing can blow up is when you put a boundary in that wasn't there at the, orig at, at the start, that can feel like that time where my energy elevated off the charts is it was almost like a boundary happened because um I I wasn't gonna I wasn't available to be uh her rescuer anymore right I had this new audience I had new clients you know I wasn't going to be her sole rescuer anymore you know I, like she was going to have some of the attention taken away from her because she wasn't one of my you know key people anymore so oh and the other thing is what I did was I wrote off the 5k. I said, look, you are so disgusting <laughs> uh, and so blaming and horrible. I said, I don't want that money coming at me. Uh, like, because any payment she made, she would have been spitting really 
negative hurtful energy at me um and so I said look don't even bother with the money you know and she never even said thank you <laughs> so um and the only reason I know some of these details is I went back before I did this call and I listened to myself telling the story um of several years ago so some of these details have not been like front of mind I'd forgotten a lot of this but I did listen to the details quite recently so um yeah she didn't even say thank you and I just was like if somebody lets you away with a five grand bill after having done all that for you would you say thank you I don't know but she certainly wasn't going to pay me with any grace or kindness or whatever so um I just cut it so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that either because I don't know if that's helpful um but anyway that was that was the outcome and uh and it was really really hard anyway enough about that but what I'm trying to get you to you know and I'm telling you this I mean it's it's vulnerable right like it's uh it's not something I wanted anyone to know it was public I didn't want it public I was felt all the shame around it I was like oh my god um because um and so I'm sharing it because if it happens if it ever happened to you like you're not a bad terrible person it's maybe just this dynamic playing out so let me just I'm gonna uh I'm gonna stop sharing this for oh no I can just scroll down I'll just scroll down so this is gonna be the workbook that I will send out with the um with the replay um let me just scroll down to see if there's anything else that I really wanted because I'm just aware of the time of kind of at that I said it was gonna be about 90 minutes and we're at that time so um although we were a few minutes late getting started so um let me just have a quick scroll to see if there's anything really that I really wanted to make sure we covered um and yeah you'll get this so don't worry if I'm skimming over it but um Oh yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about um, how to um, how to get out of this. So um, I put a little a couple of notes here just to remember: your value is not your client's results, right? You are inherently wonderful and valuable without their results. As we've obviously gone over and talked about, there are so many extenuating circumstances that you cannot control, no matter how wonderful a coach, a healer, a therapist, whatever you are, that you can't control, right? I had another client that's just come to mind. We worked together and again, I coached my ass off. Um, she did this big summit. It was won awards, all this kind of stuff. Like we did, we did some really cool stuff actually. Um, and I enjoyed working with her. Lovely girl, blah, blah, blah. Um, but after I think it was God, it was a year and a half after we worked together or something. Anyway, she'd obviously been holding on to something, but um, I got this email, and not only like she was accusing me of something like a year and a half after working with her. So sometimes the emails that come a year and a half are like really nice, and some of them are were not so much. Anyway, she accused me of something, of something about her not making the money, but at the same time she also admitted that she didn't even want to be a coach and didn't want to grow her business, and so. But we did save her marriage. So um, why was she working with me? Was it maybe to save her marriage? <laughs> right? Because if she actually admitted that she didn't really want to be a coach and grow a business and all we'd been working on was trying to, um, you know, it wasn't really my fault if she wasn't bringing on the clients, even though we'd redesigned the packages and the pricing and aligned. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so what I'm saying is sometimes people get some, they'll get what they need from your work whether it's what they thought they needed or not <laughs> right so she does admit it saved her marriage so I'm good with that right and we did we ended up working together a few times after that but um you know sometimes if something isn't working you know the the coat or whatever is is the easiest target for their um pain and you know projection of whatever now uh what was I going to say about that? I was going to say something else about that. Oh my God, there's so many different layers to all this. There's so much, so much. Um, oh yes. So the other part of this, when I say people will get what they need, right? Sometimes you'll join a group program and you're maybe some of the content isn't, but you've met your best friend, right? 
or something or you go on some experience right there's always a good reason if you join something originally I truly believe you get what you need from every experience right if you joined something and your intuition told you to do it right so if you know because we all have free will right I didn't force anyone to work with me I didn't force anyone to join my program or the whatever or fly to Australia or whatever the, my clients have done I didn't ever force anyone to do anything right so if if somebody has come to work with you they've had some sort of process of making that decision and I truly believe if your intuition uh or as the coach taking on a client if your intuition is good or if you ig ignore your intuition then this is more likely to happen right so I've taken on a few clients where I probably shouldn't have right I probably knew in the discovery call that maybe they weren't going to be the ideal client but it was gonna you know it was gonna make me some money so I have to my own detriment taken on those clients before and it's hurt me it's hurt me not in a good you know I've maybe ended up in a bit of this situation or it was a little bit murky or a little sticky or something didn't quite work you know and um and vice versa so I think some people know they shouldn't join a program but they do anyway because they want to be rescued so bad right but something in them is like mm, I don't know if this is right I think if you if you're if you haven't gone against your intuition you're going to get exactly what you need if you've gone against your intuition you're still going to get what you need but you might not have such a positive outcome I've also said no to working with um clients before I had one client she kept she'd never done any work on herself and I just didn't think she was ready and I told her no probably three or four times and I was like look I'm not rejecting you <laughs> I would like to work with you at some point but I want you to do some of my programs first and I'm not trying to get extra business because I was saying no to the higher ticket one-on-one -on -one, right but I just felt she wasn't ready and I was so glad that I did that right so I was honoring I was at that point in my business and in my own development where I wasn't just saying yes to any client I was really listening and going not yet that's not it's not the right time so um and if I had wanted to rescue her I would have taken her on at the beginning but it wasn't until I could see that she was coming out of her, res her victim mode or like had healed enough that through doing programs and different other things that she was ready to be a client that took responsibility and was able to take the healing. And I knew that she would get a benefit from our work together. So that takes, takes some practice. It takes time. It's not something that you can just immediately be like, no, no, thank you. I did it. Obviously I didn't say, I, I think you're bad or wrong or whatever. I just said, you're not ready. It's not time. It's not fair of me to take your money if I don't think it's going to be the the right thing for you or the right fit in this moment right so I think it's uh, uh and you can tell sometimes they're not the right fit or you can refer them to somebody else right it takes a lot of guts to do that especially if um you're sort of turning away money but in the long run you're going to save yourself a whole bunch of heartache um and you know potential the outcomes are, are just not going to be as pretty so I think trusting your intuition in that is um is really uh really important one other thing that's just popped into my mind is I think at the moment um our mm, I think in our industry I think burnout is a massive issue right um I think some people in the past have not delivered on things that they've sold because of burnout before they could fully deliver it and um, and I think if somebody is in this cycle, they're, uh, I don't know how many times, they're way more likely to burn out than a coach who is not in a drama cycle. It's exhausting. And like I put in here, the victim is taking energy. So if you have a whole, if you have 10, 12, one-on-one -on -one clients, plus some group programs going and your clients are taking your energy uh it's exhausting and if you are having to give 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 right looking for your validation you're over delivering because you have to because they might hate you if you don't and they're still going to hate you even if you over deliver 
fucking exhausting. Unbelievably tiring. Not good for you. Not good at all, right? So part, partly I think that led to my burnout was was being not having healed this. Um, also coming off 17 years of accounting that I didn't enjoy uh, and not really taking a break before I jumped into my business also stacked up so there was multiple reasons for this that stacked up on themselves right so I can't blame just these people but I think it um it adds to it and I think a big fear again in our industry that I often come up with people is they have um a fear of burning out again maybe they witnessed it on somebody else but it's usually I don't want to burn out again from whatever it was maybe it was in their business maybe it was another situation um, and that can be a real genuine fear that stops people getting back into it, scaling, all that kind of stuff. So if, especially if you've been affected by this, um, that can be a real kind of side effect issue that, that comes with it. So, um, right, let's talk about uh, a little bit. I know we're sort of watching out for time. So um, as a coach, I've got in here watching out for your um, your your own mirrors and triggers, right? Um, you know, you'll see your client either present as their, your past, present or future self. Um, they might be triggered by you because you represent something. So be very aware of your own triggers. Um, and this, an example of how this can happen when you are more healed, right? So your clients still might be in victim mode and they still might project things. But if you are really good within yourself, you know you're good at what you do, you know you've delivered, you're not seeking the acceptance or whatever from, from them anymore. If something comes up, you're in so much of a better situation to guide them through it lovingly without your own trigger making you go into defense mode or or whatever, or attack or, you know, that kind of dynamic. So, um uh just one really quick example I mean I've had but if I think if if you as long as you're clear before you start working with somebody hey if you have an issue I might be able to read their cash records but I'm not necessarily a mind reader at all times if, if something is simmering I might not know about it right like I might have a whole bunch of other clients um and I'm not aware that something within you has triggered or flipped um if you're really clear um if something comes up please come and talk to me email me, email my assistant, like whatever that looks like. Um, come and talk to me first before you go, um, you know, take it to Facebook or set up a Reddit thread. Right. If you can have that kind of relationship where you're like, hey, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. Um, if I have done something to hurt you or trigger you, please tell me. Right. Um, and we'll and we'll handle this like grown ups um that have a good intention and want the best for each other um and you set that as an in intention from the very beginning um I think handling anything that comes up is is really important I've had clients since that and since I've sort of healed a lot of this uh come to me with things and I'm like okay let's work through this right what's coming up for you is this you know and every time not that it's happened that many times but it's never about me if I'm healed right if I'm if I'm good, you know, and I'm uh, not triggered, right? If I'm triggered, then that's on me. I have something deeper to work through. If I'm like, if something comes up and I'm not like, uh, then there's something we can dig into. But I, I don't have maybe something to work on. It's just come up because of our work together and the coaching and we can work through it. So uh, I had a client, we're on a call, group call. <laughs> like this is how, in a, we were going through I think we were doing a forgiveness exercise on the group call and uh and I was like and, and you know who did you forgive or whatever and you know to have a little talk about afterwards and something and she was like you and I was like me what have I done anyway so she uh anyway we I was like okay with it because whatever she was accusing me of we don't need to go into that um uh wasn't bad or wrong and I hadn't really done anything anyway we went into a process and it turned out it was something from her childhood and blah, blah, blah. And then we went even deeper and it was a past, past life thing. So we beautifully healed it. 
she carried on in the program. There was no no issues, no more stuff. We worked together afterwards. We had a beautiful relationship. So um, it can still things can come up, but you know, you can work through them and it's it's not a big deal, right? When you're coming, you know, when you have um clear communication um and, and all that kind of stuff. So a couple of ways to that I do like to um all right, hang on, let's just look at this for a second. So yeah, so what I've put in is a few steps in this in this form is like if you are being accused of something, you know, you don't need to respond immediately. I took my time with that client um, after the event, right? I needed to take care of my side of the street so as I wasn't giving back the, the venom that she had had um, given me. And I, I needed to get into coming from, I still defended myself, which I shouldn't have, but I did go into defense mode, um, which I would rather I hadn't, but I had never dealt with something like that and I felt like I needed to defend myself. So anyway, um, so we want to be taking responsibility for our, our part that we have played, right? So if you're not triggered, you don't need to do that. If you are triggered, you have something to look at, right? Um, what I have done, if something has come up with a client and I maybe know something's coming or we have a call coming up, I will sit and clear every ounce of any trigger or anything within me so I can be really neutral uh I want to be obviously I've done a shit ton of work so it's a lot easier but if I had something I knew was coming up with a client uh I have sat for hours and cleared I sometimes just do um I do you know lots of different like we've all got done loads of different mentalities whether it's some tapping or I sometimes do some emotion code with a magnet you know like working through every layer of emotion that, that's coming up for me um whatever that looks like, or I would go and see my own coach or my own kinesiologist or whatever and be like, I have this thing. I would make sure I dealt with that before the phone call, before my next Zoom session so I could hold the space really cleanly. I think that's really important. So um, if you've had something come up, if you were like totally like cool, you can do that straight away. But if you need the time, take responsibility and clear whatever stuff is coming up for you and um, because it's very unlikely it's actually about you or them <laughs> it's from your past right like so it's it's your childhood it's your your you know a past life whatever so ancestral it can be from all these different places so um heal your own trigger right Re reply from a loving place I did manage to do that in that situation but still was defensive so try not to go into defense mode what something I heard I don't know I don't want to not religious but um something I read somewhere I can't I, I could would quote it if I could remember but they basically said you don't need to, was it Mary some sort of Marianne Williamson -y, like uh what's that book that she did all her uh oh, she had the divine law of compensation but she used to use that sacred text or whatever it was but she basically said that you don't need to defend yourself if you are in the right. And this comes back to your question about do you need to respond? Um, like God will defend you, <laughs> you know, like you're you're OK, like you don't like they've got your back. Like you don't need to if you're in the right or you haven't you know, made a mistake, you own your part, but you don't need to defend yourself. That will be done for you um, by your cosmic team, however you identify them. Um, so knowing that is, uh, is really good. And I think as well, part of it is setting your clients up to know that this could happen. Right. So, um, when I was working with people in my, in, you know, they join a group program and then people get buyer's regret, right. They freak out, you know, within the 24, 40 hours after having made such a purchase, I used to actually send a video that said, Hey, day two you're probably regretting this and freaking out um and uh just to let you know that this is your subconscious mind um freaking out and uh probably thinks you shouldn't be doing this so I'm just here to tell you that it's totally normal reaction and uh your subconscious is trying to protect you from change and uh whatever so I used to go into that and explain it so telling people up front that um it might happen and if it does it's normal and you can deal with it um can go a long way to uh stopping it or or if it did happen that people would know how to deal with it without having to go and 
spread it all over social media you know so I think that educating people is great also um uh, really clearly setting out uh what it is and isn't right what what your program is and what it's not and like uh you know that kind of uh you know if you're gonna cancel a session you know it's been clear about your boundaries and if you know if they cancel sessions all the time and then think you should just be available or whatever that looks like if you've been clear up front about how it operates and how it works um and uh that you're not going to solve all of their problems in six months or whatever it is then uh, again it's uh uh it's progress towards stopping this happening. I even used to teach my my clients obviously about boundaries and setting boundaries and holding boundaries. And it was really, really funny. Uh, one of my clients, I remember she messaged private met, she was in a group program. She didn't have one-on-one access, but she private messaged me and said, I hope this isn't violating your boundaries, but. <laughs> and I was like, oh, here is a lesson for me in how to hold my boundaries, right? So uh you know people know when they're pushing it right people know when uh you know they're they can they can be taking a little bit too much so um and they might even tell you they're doing it right so uh you've just got to be super aware um so there's a little exercise in here just about spending some time with yourself after this after you watch the replay and maybe going okay, I'm going to sit with my journal and be like, where have I played out the victim? Where am I currently being a rescuer? Where am I being the persecutor? Am I trolling on somebody? You know, am I hating? Am I commenting on their social media, right? Am I am I doing that, right? Am I doing it with my, uh, with my partner, with my husband? Am I wanting him to change and bitching to all my friends that he's not changing? Um, you know, am I blaming him for my business not working, uh, Am I blaming it on my kids? You know, who are you blaming um, and and not showing up fully? I remember one client was like, well, I mean, I'll, I'll get back to my business when my kids are at, out of school. And I was like, oh, okay, great. When, when will that be? And she's like, well, you know, they're just starting secondary. And these kids were like 11 and 12. I'm like, wait, so you're going to put this on your kids? <laughs> not, not cute, right? So she was going to blame them and use them as the excuse for not, starting her business oh, I'll do it when they're at uni right not cute right so you just wh where is that showing up for you then you can blame them then resent them later not nice right so um maybe it's with your girlfriends so um maybe your girlfriend creates a lot of drama maybe they keep dating the same guy they don't listen to your advice but they always come running you know looking for that support um I had a friend like that and I was like, I, I just can't hold space for this anymore. Like, I can't watch you doing this for you, to yourself again, <laughs> right? I was like, I'm going to need the receipts from him going to therapy and stopping this, you know? I said, and if you take him back and he hasn't done that, uh, we're just setting ourselves up to go through this cycle again and I'm going to have to hold space for it. So it could happen with your girlfriends. So clients partner might be a family member um I used to try and rescue my parents try to rescue my sister uh and, and it's just not cute so we don't need to go into that so a few other things so we've got the opposite right it's all been sounding pretty fucking horrendous hasn't it <laughs> awful honestly it might you might be like do you know what? I'm just gonna pack it in and not be doing this anymore I can't be arsed I don't want to be on a reddit thread so the good news, absolutely, it can be healed. It can be stopped. Uh, there is a there is positivity within the coaching industry. Um, but, you know, I saw just the other day, people are calling, we need to be regulated. We need to, and I'm like, who is monitoring this shit, right? If you, you've just listened to this whole call and you're like, ooh, that one victim-y client who's really pissed off and owes you money, that client could have gone to the regulatory board and been like, Joanna's this terrible person and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh, no. So how do we regulate that? Was Should I not have coached again because that one person owed me money and she was pissed off and now it was my fault, right? <laughs> Even though I wrote it off. So um, you can understand why, why people think they need regulation because this stuff happens over and over and over again. And we're just in these big drama triangles, right? 
Um, and I think it's more important to regulate our nervous systems, not the whole industry, so as we are not recreating the drama triangles within our businesses, within our relationships, within our friendships, right? Um, and uh, this is, uh, it's just, it can be changed. And, the, you know, like I said, you know, the burnout, people can't deliver if they're burnt out. I paid somebody five grand, she never showed up again, <laughs> never did my website. I think she burnt out. And um never saw the website or the money again right so these things happen all the time um now let's see so it can't but it can be positive right so if we're and you know it's always like it starts with us right we don't like the drama in the industry okay we'll stop creating it in your own in your own business right in your own life in your own um scenarios so obviously healing super important whatever that is for you right whether it's with a coach a healer different modalities work better for some people than others right working on your inner child like some forgiveness work all of this stuff is really really important and helps um calm this cycle down so on the plus side and again this is in your little workbook so just so i don't forget some of the things so the victim becomes a creator right they they can do amazing things right they they do awesome things and if you're coaching them they're producing and doing what they want to be doing what their soul is asking them to do the rescuer is just the coach right you go back into the role that you were supposed to be doing because you like helping people but you don't need to be rescuing them right so you're holding space you're assisting them but you're not taking responsibility right and then our persecutor troll becomes a really nice cheerleader right somebody that builds people up um encourages you know nice energy right is happy when their friends succeed right not pissed off and triggered so the the positive outcome the positive uh creation is is fantastic it's phenomenal so it's the good stuff right it's when it works and it's nice and it feels good so uh what we're going to do we're going to recognize it right so as I explained um obviously some of this stuff if it's a little t trauma that's created it it might sneak in you might not be the you might not be a drama queen right you haven't gone and created this on purpose right like I didn't create that situation with my client on purpose right it happened sure um but I didn't go out of my way to have a negative experience right like I wasn't I don't know what I would have done to do that but you know it certainly wasn't something I was actively you know it's like you know, when you're if your friend spreads rumors about you like well, I wouldn't do that I wasn't you know I wasn't making shit up right but it still happened the drama still happened because I still had something unhealed right so even if you're not actively looking for it it can happen so we're taking responsibility and we're stopping that behavior, right? As soon as you notice when you are doing it, you got to stop it, right? You're like, oh shit, here I am doing it again. I've got to stop it. And sometimes that is the trickiest part because you are feels like you're withdraw getting your the love withdrawn, the acceptance, the validation, it all goes away. You've got to find it within to be able to stop the behavior, right? Um, and that's when they can kick off and be upset. But you've almost, you've got to like, be okay with that you've got to be like I know I'm doing I know I'm doing a healthy choice for me um and that's okay so healing the part that's unworthy forgiving yourself forgiving the others knowing that they're acting from their wounding and whether they can heal that or see it or take any responsibility for it isn't on you you can't you can't uh do it for them anymore right you've got to stop that um and then setting new boundaries a bit like I explained you know if you're really clear I actually have a document I sometimes send out to new clients um might need a little bit of updating but it was really clear I said look we have terms and conditions on the website we know nobody reads those uh so here's the highlights here's what I expect from you here's how I will show up you know um and being really clear about that you know just a one or two page pdf that they actually read and have to like sign and say they've read it can be can go a long way right um so that's another option um we've got to be taking these people off pedestals right because your rescuer might be somebody that you have elevated to another position or you are disempowering yourself because you think they are better have it easier than you whatever um take take them take them off their pedestals um because then they can't fall you can't push them off later or they can't fall off if 
they are suddenly no longer perfect. So um, it's disempowering for you because you don't see yourself as an equal, which of course you are. Um, so nobody, absolutely nobody is perfect or better than anyone else, obviously. Uh, let's see, as a coach, yeah, I said that, set your boundaries really, have the regular check-ins so you do have your receipts just in case, deal with your triggers, don't be defensive. Now, the other thing uh, that is, is sort of fueling this drama, obviously, if you watch the news, you read the newspapers, you're constantly scrolling online, um, you know, if you're watching, I mean, I don't watch any kind of murder, drama, uh, scary shit, on, on, I used to love a good, like, CSI, whatever, I don't watch it, I don't, I just don't want that in my nervous system. I don't want that in my consciousness. Uh, my mum loves a good motorway chase cop show program. I just refuse. I don't I don't want that stuff. So some people, you know, but that's where they're like fueling it, right? My dad with the war is like, yeah. Um, so if you want to do a drama detox, you, you want to cut that stuff out <laughs> or stop altogether, right? So um, not watching news is a really easy way to start. Um, the other thing is you are physically addicted, right? Uh, we can often have a histamine intolerance that is linked to drama. So we don't really have much time to get into all this, but um, it's worth looking at uh, a low histamine diet while you are detoxing from drama. Uh, it's uh, There's some stuff, when I went through that list originally, I was like, you mean my whole diet? <laughs> the... I really love um so there's some stuff on here also I think I was like what so alcohol obviously is is uh can cause a histamine reaction and it can often be the pesticides or the sulfites preservatives are in it that is the high histamine um pineapple I've never I haven't eaten pineapple in years but um spinach obviously so many of us think we're being healthy having spinach but it can be fueling this it can also cause really high oxalate levels which is something else um, chocolate, oh yes, all addicted to that. Aged cheese, vinegars, processed meats, dried fruit, soy sauce, fermented food, smoked fish. There is loads more, but this, this, um, the addiction to those foods is ca can cause inflammation in your body, which can, you know, cause drama in your body too. Um, and there's a real connection. I've recently been, um, uh, it's probably more aware of our connection you know obviously we know there's a mind body connection right psychosomatic is a thing we know that um but I think and part of my journey I got into the spiritual world was through my health journey initially um trying to figure out my weight and all that kind of stuff and uh and then I got went way over into the spiritual world and kind of forgot about my body for a minute and and I'm sort of working a lot more detoxing my body flushing my liver my gallbladder all that kind of stuff really quite intensively um but I'm seeing a, a connection in in uh, I'm seeing a, a direct connection in other things as I'm flushing this stuff out of my body so um anger resentment bitterness if you're a victim and you're all anger or a rescuer and you're anger angry and bitter it can cause gallstones, build up of, of issues in your gallbladder, uh, which causes hormone issues, more weight gain, all this kind of stuff. So it's a vicious, vicious cycle. And so while we want to take care of healing emotionally and spiritually, I think um, combining it with a physical detox is even more impactful and really, really powerful. So um, I'm a big, big fan of that. So um other reasons that you might have this histamine issue, um, obviously we've talked about trauma, different stress levels that you might not even realize are stresses, but they're sort of all stacking up. Um, stress over time can also be trauma. Uh, so really important to just address that and, um, and be aware of it. Um, it might have been antibiotics, medications, especially the pill over time um can cause I was on it for 10 years and it really messed things up in my body and like threw me out of whack so um I've been off it for over 10 years and probably still balancing things out mold can be a major issue chemicals toxins parasites yeast infections all of that kind of cut stuff can cause more sensitivity more fatigue more adrenal fatigue nutrient deficiencies and excess estrogen which all cycle back into more problems so 
um, have a breath, slow down, I will now, um, and know that you can break free of it and just be very aware um, and don't let it take you down in any way. Um, and yeah, be super kind to yourself like that coach said to me and I was like, well, you're not helping, but be, be kind to yourself. If you're ever in this situation, um, you know, you are not, not alone. Um, 